Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host, CJ. Now, just four months ago, I had one of these Enermac Lictec TR42 AIOs fail on me. I did a whole video on it, you can check it out here, but this isn't the one that failed. This is actually the replacement unit Enermac sent me to replace the first one that failed. And now, just four months after installing this unit, it's failed too. And by failed, I mean when it was working properly, it kept my 32 core Threadripper in the low 30s at idles and never exceeded 63 or 64C at load. But earlier this week, I noticed while encoding some footage with handbrake, my CPU temp was creeping close to 80 degrees C, which is concerning, especially considering handbrake maxes at about 53% CPU usage. So I did some troubleshooting. I even pulled the cooler block and repasted the CPU, but still saw temps in the low 50s at idle and over 80 at load. So I pulled this unit, installed my backup cooler, and now here we are. I'm gonna tear this one apart and see what we see. But before I do that, let me answer the relevant questions. First, when I say failed, like I said a minute ago, I just mean that the cooler's thermal performance started to degrade significantly. Neither pump actually stopped working. Second, both AIOs are the second gen coolers. I'll show you how I know this for sure once I take this one apart. Next, the RMA process for the first cooler was probably the smoothest RMA I've ever done. I filled out their form online, they sent me a new cooler completely free of charge, and even provided a shipping label to send the old one back. So they did pay shipping both ways. I didn't send the old one back though. Sorry, not sorry, Enermax. So the first one did fail, but it might have been my fault. See, while taking the unit out of my old case, I dropped the pump block onto the radiator and smashed up a few of the fins. Not really a big deal at the time, or so I thought. What had actually happened is a piece of the fin broke off the water channel at its weld point, which resulted in a tiny pinhole in the channel. Not a big enough hole to leak fluid, but I assume big enough to allow fluid to evaporate and air to slowly take its place. Air in the system leads to oxidation. That oxidation collects in the pump and cold plate channels. The unit fails. Now, this unit has the same issue, but I didn't do it this time. I mean, you can actually hear how much air there is in this radio. Now, I can't prove this, but I believe this is just a refurbished AIO Enermax sent me not a new unit, and if so, they did a really lousy refurb. Finally, I did repair the old cooler. I flushed it, I refilled it, I bled it, and then now it's back on my system, keeping my Threadripper cooler than it's ever been. Now, short of the not so pretty brazing job I did to fix the hole on that one, I'm going to show you how to correctly refurb this cooler. So, first things first, let's drain it. Man, I can tell you straight up, this water stinks. I mean, it, it, it smells stagnant. It's also, yeah, it stinks. You can see it's also like a nasty brownish orange color. There is chunks of all kinds of sediment floating around in there. This is, I can just imagine what I'm gonna see when I pull this cold plate off. All right, let's get this cold plate off, see what it looks like. Thank you. 
Oh, I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it'd be, but remember, this has only been running for four months. And you can look at that just built up in the channels there. Let's take a look at. All right, like I said, so the difference between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 is actually this flow, this flow membrane and gasket assembly. On the Gen 1, you just had the flow membrane, and then you had a separate black rubber gasket that went around the cold plate, and that gasket is what Enermax actually said the problem was with their Gen 1, and that's what they replaced it with, with this, and they said this was gonna fix the problem. Obviously not. All right, so I'm gonna break this down further, and what I'm gonna do is I wanna disconnect the pump from the radiator, and as bad as these AAOs have been, it's, it's pretty much a shame, because these are so highly serviceable which is actually why I didn't return the first one. I guess you can say I had foresight that I might have a problem with the second one, so I just refurbed it myself and it's running great, which is exactly what I'm gonna do with this one. Okay, so I just removed those two tiny screws that actually hold in the radiator tubes. And now you can just completely disconnect the radiator from the block assembly. Now I'm gonna set the radiator aside Ah, oh, this thing stinks. Whoa. Now I'm gonna show you how to disassemble the block assembly so we can clean the pump itself. All right, so we just gotta move this top here. There's four screws on the corner. And this will just remove the whole LED block from the top here. Now we have these screws inside here. Remove each of those screws, we can actually get to the pump on the inside of the block. Okay, now you can see the pump assembly here. There's the impeller on the inside and then the block here. Now we can take, we can clean out, there's a lot of and it's not too bad, but you can see sediment in there. We can rinse out that impeller. Right. Okay, now it just comes down to cleaning everything, flushing out the radiator, reassembling and refilling. We'll start by cleaning the water block and pump assembly. So to do that, I'm just gonna all my pieces and parts and then I have some simple green this will break up all that nasty growth sediment I'm just gonna spray those down let them soak here in here for a while okay now this part the actual electronics I don't want to soak so this has all, this is the actual electronics part of the motor. So just gonna wipe that down. And while those parts soak, what I need to do, the most important part, is to make sure that this radiator gets flushed out really well. Now, you can do this several ways. So up until just a couple months ago, I had an electric water pump that I could connect this to, I could connect up to here, to the tube with some uh, rubber tubing, and then I can just circulate water through to flush it out. That pump died on me, so I'm just gonna do it the uh, old school way. What I'll do is connect the tube to the radiator then I'm simply gonna take this outside. I'm gonna hook it to my hose spigot and I'm gonna let this flush out for just a couple minutes. Uh, now, 
Depending on where you are in the world, this may or may not be an effective method of flushing out the radiator. I'm in Colorado, we have some of the purest tap water in the world, really. Um, but if you're in a place that has like especially really hard water, then you're gonna wanna flush it out a different way, which I'm gonna show you as soon as I get this flushed out the first time. Okay, now that I flushed it pretty well with just some water, now what I wanna do is wash it out. And this is where I'm gonna use a hand pump now. This is just what I happen to have in the house because another one of my hobbies Another one of my hobbies is home brewing, and this is actually a carboy siphon. This is for siphoning beer or wine out of a carboy, but I'm gonna use it as a pump. So what I have here is I have just a container full of some distilled water. I'm gonna add just a bit of the simple green, just a little bit. Then again, I'm gonna connect my tubing up to one side and then I'm just gonna pump water through All right, now that I've got it clean, I need to rinse it again. And then this time I'm going to rinse it using that same method, just with some pure distilled water. And then again, if you don't have good quality tap water to rinse this the first time, you could use this method using just pure distilled water to rinse it or flush it then clean it and then rinse it again. Okay, same thing. Now I, my container's just full of pure distilled water and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna keep rinsing the water through the radiator. I'm gonna rinse for a few minutes. I'm gonna empty this container. I'm gonna put in some fresh water. I'm gonna do that a few times until I get this radiator good and rinsed out. All right, now I've refilled this container three times. I've completely rinsed out the radiator. Now I'm draining all that distilled water out of it. Okay. Okay, so the radiator's clean. Now I wanna finish cleaning off those, the pump and block assembly. So I got my little toothbrush and I wanna clean out these micro fins. Simple green is good stuff. You can see it took, just soaking, it took all the tarnish right off this place. This plate, this is nice shiny copper now. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these to a sink, rinse them off, and then give them a final rinse with the rest of my distilled water. Okay, now that all the pieces are clean and dry, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the pump with the exception of the cold plate. I'm gonna leave that off for now.
Now, one thing I noticed when I disassembled it, that these screws, these little plug screws were badly corroded when I took them out of there. So I just soaked them in a little cup of CLR. Now they're looking like new again. All right, now that the pump assembly is put back together, what I wanna do now is pre-fill the radiator. Now you can reassemble the entire thing and then use the fill ports to fill this radiator and use the pump itself to circulate and fill the radiator. However, because there's no reservoir built into an all-in-one liquid cooler, bleeding all the air out of the radiator is, well, it's difficult and time consuming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill the radiator the same way I clean the radiator using my hand pump. For my first radiator AIO, what I used was this Primo Chill Liquid Utopia. This is the antimicrobial and anti-corrosion additive just to some straight distilled water. And that's what I filled the first one with. This time, I happen to have this bottle of EK Cryofuel. This is the same coolant you would use to fill like a custom open loop. I just have some that I used in a different project and once it's open, it only has a, it has a limited shelf life. So I'm just gonna use this. But again, as long as you use distilled water with any type of antimicrobial and anti-corrosion additive, uh, like Mayhem's or Primo Chill or anything like that, you'll be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna connect up. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. This time a little slower, because what I, I don't want to introduce air into the line. I want to get all the air out of this radiator. Or as much as I can. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reattach my water block. Trying to keep it nice and vertical. Now what I do is just fill this water block up. I got the radiator filled. Now I just want to fill, this is why I left the cold plate off. I want to fill the water block up. And it doesn't take much. All right, now we should have a pretty airtight seal, but we still have to do a little bleeding. Okay, now to bleed the system, what I wanna do is basically add a reservoir to the pump. 
how I'm gonna do that is with the pump facing away from me, basically the cold plate facing away from me, I have the radiator hanging off the edge of the desk. So it's the lowest point in the system basically. So as the liquid circulates, the air will rise to the improvised reservoir that I'm about to attach. So facing this way, how the block works is this is the inlet side. This the water runs into the radiator, through the radiator, and then back out this way. I wanna connect that reservoir to that side of the block. So as the air comes through the pump, it'll escape into that reservoir I'm gonna attach. And now the reservoir is, you can use a few different things. I saw a video Wendell did on refurbing one of these coolers from level one techs and he used i think just a water bottle he cut off the top this is actually a color applicator it's for hair coloring i actually have this because i have a pet conure a bird and when he was a baby this was his i used as his bottle so i just cut the bottom off the bottle and then cut the tip so it's the same size as that opening and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna remove just that plug screw right and then i want to I got my bottle to the right size, and then I have some waterproof wax here. You can use uh, poster putty. This is actually earplug wax. It's wax for molding earplugs, but it works great because it's waterproof. Just want to make sure you don't get any of the wax or the putty or whatever you're using into the plug hole, because then it'll get into your system, and which is not good. I'm just gonna basically Attach that all down there. Now, before I get it started, what I want to do, I just want to add some coolant to this bottle, make sure it's not leaking. Looks pretty good. Now what I have here is, this is the SATA to fan cable that comes with this Enermax cooler. I just have it plugged into the SATA connector on a secondary system I have. So now I can connect, when I connect this up, it should run this pump at full speed. And now you can see down in there as the water circulates around those little air bubbles. So what we're doing is bleeding the system, letting all the little air escape from our system. So our AIO is completely full of just our coolant. And I'm just gonna let that run for a while. I'm gonna let it run. I'm not gonna leave it. I wanna make sure that it doesn't leak. And then every once in a while, what I'll do is I'll just kind of reposition, shake up this You'll hear air escape the system. This pump is pretty silent when there is no air in the system. What makes an AIO pump loud in most cases is there's some air bubbles circulating through the system. And when that air hits the pump, you can hear it. Now, if you have a lot of air in the system, this level of coolant will start to drop as the coolant replaces the air. But because we pre-filled this radiator, I don't think there'll be that much of a drop in water. Well, that's bleeding. Take a look at the coolant that I took out of there. That's supposed to be, I think, pretty clear with kind of a greenish tint to it. And this is just, I don't know, brown and nasty, full of chunks and uh, smells horrible. This is definitely the reason why this cooler was not performing. Okay. This has been running for a couple hours now. I was keeping an eye on it while I was started editing the first part of this video, and I'm pretty sure I got all the air out of it. Before I finish up with this, I do wanna cover a few points I may have missed. First, you will need some sort of multi-bit screwdriver set to disassemble the AIO. There are like three different size six-point torque screws and two different size cross-tip screws to remove. As far as the other stuff I use, the tubing, the pump, it was just what I happened to have in the house that would get the job done. Like I said, the last time I did this, I used an electric marine sup pump. I've also used DDC and D5 pumps to flush cooling systems, but anything that will pump water through the radiator will work. The carboy siphon I used cost about 10 to 15 bucks and 
comes with the tubing and for about ten dollars you can get a hand pump from any home depot or lowe's i also use simple green to clean the rad not a lot just about an ounce to a liter and a half of distilled water simple green works it's biodegradable and environmentally friendly and it rinses easily from the system but there are products specifically made for this purpose from mayhems primo chill ek and others you can use too i always use simple green i was gonna use one of the commercial radiator cleaners for this video but currently due to world events i couldn't get anything shipped until like the middle of may so i think that's it let's finish this up now i can unplug the pump and i got a little drainage container so i can carefully remove my improvised reservoir and now I want to make sure that the fill port is full if it's not you can top it off mine is more than enough full and right in the right on top of the water I want to go ahead and insert the plug screw dry it off And that's it i don't hear any air bubbles in the system it's definitely completely full not like it was before now i'm gonna put this aio back on my system and use the one with the patched hole as my backup i'll add some operating temps and stats in the description below but let's wrap this up with my conclusion and that conclusion is if you're thinking of buying this aio from enermax don't it sucks Enermax sucks for not fixing it and having the balls to continue to sell it now I did say the RMA process was a breeze but they sent me a replacement unit that was worse than the first one it failed within four months if you have one of these and it's failing or failed if you have the ability to fix it like I did here then do that you can RMA it but you might get a crap unit back and it's unfortunately because this is a well-designed unit and one of the only AIOs out there with both full coverage cold plate for the Threadripper and a 500 watt TDP rating, which my overclock 2990WX easily hits at load. But now that it's been flushed and properly filled with good fluid, I'm sure it'll work great for a long time, but Enermax has a lot of work to do before I'll buy or endorse any of their products again. And speaking of endorsing a product, I don't actually have any sponsors. So the only product I'm endorsing is my channel. So please, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, give it one of these. If you feel like giving it one of these, at least tell me why in the comments below. I hope you learned something today. That's why I do what I do. And until I do the next one, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you'll join me again.